Hi there, my name is Misha. I'm a Microsoft MVP and I changed my career to DevOps in record time. Now I'm a leader of a community of people who want to do the same. And from the community, I received a question, does a home lab count as work experience? And I think the answer is yes. And let me illustrate this with a story. A year ago, I was involved with hiring a candidate for the cloud operations team I was working for. One of the candidates I was interviewing was this extremely smart fellow who had a master's degree in Chinese language. He had taken a very impressive amount of Azure certifications. And as you may know, I'm a big fan of certifications and I think they are a great asset to your career. So what was the problem here then? Well, when I asked him about the projects he did to achieve the certifications, it became clear that he had only studied the theory. He was honest and he said he did all of the labs, but that eventually you just end up clicking through the labs and not really engaging with them. This has been my experience too with these kinds of courses and learning tracks. You see, the hands-on work as a DevOps or cloud engineer is not that difficult if you've done it a few times before. When you've been around the block, many of the problems have the same solutions, but you need to get your feet wet in order to start getting exposure to these examples. Take YAML files, for example. These days, I love YAML and I can write it well, but in the beginning, it was a massive struggle. If you've ever been wrestling with a wrongly indented YAML file for several hours, you will know what I'm talking about. Everything seems in order, but because you place a hyphen wrong somewhere, the whole file falls apart. Have you ever been in that nerve-wracking situation where you're absolutely certain your YAML file is correct, but the computer keeps stubbornly insisting that it's not? Imagine the scene. You're hunched over your keyboard, eyes straining at the screen, meticulously checking each line for what feels like the hundredth time, your heart races, frustration bubbles up and a knot forms in your stomach as you scrutinize every indentation, every colon, every dash. You start to question your sanity and your skills, doubting if you'll ever find that elusive error. It's like being trapped in a never-ending loop of despair, where the clock ticks louder with every passing second, mocking your futile attempts to fix the file. As the error messages continue to flash on the screen, you feel a wave of helplessness wash over you. You know the file is perfect, logically. It all makes sense, but the computer remains unconvinced. The room feels smaller, the air heavier, and your patience thinner. You might even find yourself talking to the machine, pleading for some hint, some clue as to what it wants. It's an emotional roller coaster that leaves you teetering between bouts of anger and resignation. Yet you push on, driven by the sheer determination to conquer this digital nemesis. If someone hasn't been through an experience like that before, in my opinion, they are not ready for the job yet. You need to get your feet wet in order to be considered more than a complete beginner. We did not hire that guy, and not much later, he actually made a completely different career choice and went into another direction. So I managed to spot a lack of actual passion and interest with tech in him. And there's nothing wrong with that. The good news is, however, that you can begin gaining the experience by starting a home lab today. In my opinion, there's very little difference between setting up a well-designed home lab in your apartment and setting up a Kubernetes cluster for work, especially if you document it well. Take my home lab, for example. Everything is neatly set up with a clear structure according to best practices from FluxCD. My README file explains all of the hardware and design choices I've made, and the commit history shows how much work I've put into this. A good hiring manager who does some research on candidates will see this, and if he is technically savvy, he will notice the following about this person. One, he can take a technical challenge and make a plan to solve it. Two, he can work independently on a project consistently over long periods of time. Three, he is able to learn new technologies quickly and apply them. Four, he is able and willing to document his technical solutions in clear language. And five, 
He is confident in his own solutions because he's willing to make them public. They say it takes 10,000 hours to become truly proficient at something, and there's no reason why home lab work wouldn't count towards these hours. Setting up your own lab environment gives you the freedom to experiment, make mistakes, and learn from them in a way that's often not possible in a more controlled setting. It's in these moments of trial and error that real understanding is forged. You learn the quirks of different systems, the intricacies of configurations, and the subtleties of troubleshooting. The experience you gain from these self-directed projects is invaluable, preparing you to handle similar challenges in a professional environment with confidence and skill. You need to get the 10,000 hours in some way or another. Working 40 hours a week, 40 weeks a year, this will take you a little over six years. But what if you brought that up to 60 hours a week and did it for 52 weeks a year? You will have your 10,000 hours in half the time. This is what I did. The dedication you put into your home lab not only accelerates your learning, but also demonstrates your commitment and passion for the field. This hands-on experience is what truly sets you apart from someone who has only learned through theoretical means. So, start today and you'll find yourself well prepared for the real-world challenges that lie ahead. If you don't know how to get started, or if you want to connect with a group of enthusiastic home labbers, my school community is the perfect place for you. Here you will find everything you need to get started today, and when you get stuck, you can ask questions 24-7 or join one of the three Q&A calls we host every week. Remember friends, stay curious and stay productive. Have a good day.